Hi and welcome back to Bus Vintage Bikes. In this video I'm going to take you through the restoration of this little pink Le Turbo. With such a French sounding name like Le Turbo, one would be inclined to think that Le Turbos were manufactured in France. And while this is partly true, many of them were manufactured in South Africa as well. The Le Turbo brand was registered in South Africa by Mr. Basil Cohen, probably in the early 70s. It was his idea to bring a bike into South Africa that was able to cater to the masses, something less expensive than the likes of the Reynolds 531 frames and the Columbus tube frames. The early Le Turbo frames were actually manufactured in France by a company called Merrill in the region of Le Fouy. This little frame building company employed 35 people at its peak, but then as the cycling craze dwindled, it was taken over by Le Jeune. And Le Jeunes were also produced in South Africa under license, but more about that later. So here's the parts bin. It came apart really easy. No issues with the BB, nor the seat post, nor the headset. I was kind of a bit nervous about that seat post, but uh, it wasn't a problem at all. So time to get out the degreaser, give it a clean up, and let's assess what we uh, what we have to do. In later years, Basil decided to stop importing the frames from France, and he approached Gotti Hansen in South Africa to build the frames for them under the Le Turbo brand. At the time, Gotti was building his own brand of bike under the brand name Hansen from his large manufacturing plant in Babalegi near Germiston. You can see more on the Hansen in one of my previous videos where I did a restoration on it as well, as well as more of the history regarding that brand. So after the degreaser, time to have a look at the frame, what needs to be done. Some scratch marks down here, very typical of course for frames of this age. A few marks here. little bit of rust here which we need to treat a little bit of paint chipping going up the down tube top tube actually looks very good for a bike of this age very little rust both on the top and underneath A little bit of rust here as well, which needs some treatment. Almost all the steel frames, days gone by, I've got a chip there from the brake when the handlebar turns. The calipers itself. So overall in very good condition. It doesn't need a lot of work at all. A lot of those marks. Uh, I'll be able to get off just with a bit of uh, polishing. Fork looks good as well. A few marks here or there. It's a little bit of rust there. That will be able to polish out. Mostly just dirt. Well, let's get going. Get it cleaned up. So like all my projects, after the degreasing, going to use a little bit of this P1 polishing compound and I'm going to go over the entire frame with it just to get rid of most of these marks. Oops. Try to keep it on the rag and not on the floor. A 
you will find when you do this that you get rid of a lot of marks that you actually it actually look like permanent marks on the frame. All right, so once you've done the whole frame with a rubbing compound and you got rid of most of the dirt and grime that you missed with a degreaser, you can then go back and touch up the spots on the frame that are rusted. I'll first clean them off using a rubbing alcohol, just a general purpose rubbing alcohol. This is a 70%. And then I will paint it with a NS1 rust converter. You might not have the same products wherever you are, but any rust converter should work. Um, and this is a converter and a primer in one. So it takes about two to three hours for it to convert the rust into a stable compound. And then once that's done, you can then do your touch up with the color of your choice over it without applying a different primer. You can apply this liberally as you can go back and clean the, the overpainted afterwards once it's cured. So while the rust converter is doing its thing, let's see if we can do something about these stickers. Now this looks like a water slide that's been applied over the paint and it hasn't actually been clear coated. So it's almost got this matte look to it uh, from the years. So I'm going to try to touch it up with a brush and chalkboard paint because it gives a matte finish. Unfortunately it dries really quickly. So I'm going to squirt a little bit into the can and then see if I can touch up those stickers with it. Old thumbs. So while you may find many Turbos in South Africa built with lower end spec tubing like this little one I'm busy restoring now, you will also find Turbos built from higher spec tubing in the regions of Reynolds 531 and higher. This was because in the later years Gotti was able to do custom orders so the bikes could be built in the tubing of the customer's choice and even manufactured specifically to their size. You would have possibly noticed early on in the video when I was showing you the frame that this frame has two white stickers on it that says Keimbra. In the 80s and 90s, Keimbra Cycle House was a bicycle shop based in Port Elizabeth along the east coast in South Africa. It was an awesome place, a place I often used to go to just to ogle the bicycles standing in the windows. I stayed not too far away in a little town called Dispatch for the first two years when I started working. And Coimbra was the only big bicycle shop that really stocked the top end machines. I cannot tell you how many Saturday mornings I used to spend just walking around that shop staring at bicycles. If I think back to it now, the staff must have got really irritated with guys like me, who at that stage never had the money to spend on bikes, but just loved to drool over them. I'd just like to give credit to a few gentlemen, through whose collective knowledge I've been able to piece the history of Le Turbo together in South Africa. They are Duncan McIntyre, Ron Thompson, Sven van Straten, and Rob Rudman, each legends in South African cycling for their own reasons. So before I keep quiet and let you enjoy the rest of this video in peace and quiet, can I ask that uh, you smash that subscribe button for me. It'll be great to have you on board and give the video a like as well if you're enjoying it please.
As I close out this video, I'll take you through some of the parts on this bike. It's running a lovely set of Pelissier hubs, made it to Mavic MA2 rims. A combination that was actually surprisingly light and caught me a bit by surprise. Then it has a Salida crank set, which is uh, made in France, along with Simplex, simplex rear derailleur, which is also made in France. And then running Weinmann brakes, both the calipers and the levers. And those are made in Switzerland, it's a Swiss company, which goes back to the 1930s, the late 1930s, I believe. A sex set of front levers. The handlebar, unfortunately, I had to change out on this bike. I don't think the handlebar, that chrome bar that it came with, was the original bar anyway because it had a shim in it. There was a 39 centimeter bar which I swapped out with a 42 centimeter bar, uh, which was the right size. The tyres seen here were also swapped out to a set of Panarasa Gravel King 28C tyres to suit the bike better. Sadly there were casualties along the way. While I try to keep my restorations as original as possible, I just couldn't get this front derailleur hanger fixed. Whatever I had tried to bond it with kept on snapping because of the pressure that that derailleur was under. So I eventually resorted to swapping it out with an old Suntour AR front derailleur, which I had actually new old stock, I took it out of the packet. So I'll go on the search for a simplex front derailleur to make it, to take it back to original, and hopefully I'll be able to find one. And that brings us to the end of another South African built steel classic, Ayla Turbo. If you've hung around till the end of the video, enjoy some of the before and after photos. And join me in my next video where I tackle a Neo Retro build on an Italian built Tomasini frame, which I'm hoping to convert to a 10 speed setup that I can use for my personal use. Take care, keep healthy. And I'll see you in the next video.